Well, while the initial episode of Dragon Ball Daima titled Conspiracy was in fact on the slower kind of pace, it also served as a rather interesting introduction to the antagonistic forces that are going to make lives harder for our heroes. First and foremost, let's reintroduce some of them for you, as we can now tell something about their personalities and they are quite bombastic and entertaining. First, obviously, is the next in line to the demonic throne, Goma. We don't exactly know how the line of succession works within the realm of Dabura's world, but what we do learn is that he himself was the successor of his father, King Abura. For now, the little jester-like entity doesn't really look to be related to Barbadi's second-hand man, and if you watch the episode closely, he might not be as delighted by the prospect of rulership as was initially thought. Sure, he brushes it off as being worried about Barbadi and Boo, not being aware that they were defeated by Goku and friends at the time, but something tells me that there is something more than that than meets the eye. While he does seem to have Pilaf-esque types of behaviour, he is not beyond calming his emotions down quickly to get what he wants, and there are some visible insecurities. Maybe deep down he knows how big a pair of shoes he has to fill right now. Like, don't get us wrong folks, Goma seems to be evil, just like, not main villain type of evil, you know? But again, Pilaf's energy is pretty strong, though arguably he seems a little bit smoother around the edges than pure evil. Also, he has very much that master sibling energy whom he seems to be have a decent working relationship with, to the point of even considering him, allowing him a wish on the Earth Dragon Balls. Is he going to keep his promise? Well, hard to say, but convention dictates probably not, but it is pretty clear that the two are rather comfortable in each other's presence, and he definitely treats his underlings better than Pilaf used to do when we first met him. Obviously, he tries to appear more important than he actually is, but once he's caught on, then he usually backtracks. He lacks that confidence which usually villains of this archetype have, which is rather refreshing actually. While he does have knowledge about different universes and the like, Majin Buu and magic, he is largely ignorant to the happenings of outside world, and honestly is scared of things that don't even dwell in his own realm. Degasu, meanwhile, seems to be a very loyal confidant. Not even once in the initial episode did we even get a hint that he might have his own agenda. One of the ideas that we had before this even started was that he would be the one to try and manipulate Goma for his own ends, effectively making him his puppet, but so far he seems to be rather doting toward the little guy. And yes, let's address the elephant in the room. Him and Dr. Arinsu are the siblings of Shin, but technically, that shouldn't be all that weird. They come from the same tree after all, and something tells me that they might be the same generation of fruit from the kaiju tree. Technically, Arinsu is referred to as his elder though, but I do like the idea that they are not so far apart with their ages. He clearly holds a grudge against his male sibling, and is rather polite, if not a little bit weary of his scientific-oriented sister but it does seem to be based in some sort of respect. He is also not afraid to hit a child. Let's get that out of the way. Also, he doesn't want Popo's juice, and I don't know how to feel about that. So why don't we move on? Where, where were we? Yeah, yeah, okay. He is the one pushing the notion of Goma being the future leader, and he seems to be less worried about the various hardships that could rise up. Now, while much like his leader, he is shocked by the sheer power of the Boo Saga characters, and oh boy, they ain't seen nothing yet. He is more pragmatic and the cold headed one, though. And yet, to reiterate, he feels far less scheming than we expected. I mean, we thought that the main thing was going to be the game between him and Ariansu, but now we're not so sure. Maybe he might get fed up with Gomer at some point and then decide to do something else, who knows? But you know, who is larger than life, eavesdropping, and definitely wants to improve her status, Dr. Arinsu. Now while we do learn that Dabura was more than happy to help her with her research, an oddity as old guidebooks stated that science is a bit frowned upon in the demon realm and second to magic considerably, Goma wants to bargain with her. She is the one to plant the idea of Goku and friends being a problem for the newly anointed king. We do know the truth though. 
Why would our protagonist care, right? I mean, Degasu says it. The Dragon Team's never gone anywhere near getting an invitation to the Demon Realm, which makes it interesting. Why would Arinsu use Goma's fear and insecurities to wage an open conflict against them? What's even more interesting is that she herself has gone to Earth before them and doesn't seem to be bothered all that much that her younger brother and his little master are going there as well. For some reason, she might want them to be there. And she is very nosy, listening into conversations and not really hiding that fact, as well as clearly having the prior knowledge about the events of the Boo Saga before they did. Is she interested in stealing one of the wishes for herself? Or is there something else at stake here? Then there's the whole idea about black wishes and white wishes, basically good wishes, bad wishes, and how demons seem to be averse to using black ones or white ones against Dragon Balls. That's why the whole kidification thing comes to play. And I admit, this is a little less convoluted than we expected, but we'll let it slide for now if the story is good. Now speaking of wishes, there is something else Gulma wants from Shenron, and it's called the Third Eye of the Tertian Oculus, which basically sounds like a power-up item to whoever is going to be the main villain of the series. Is this this series MacGuffin? But supposedly it was a powerful artifact that was lost during the times of Dabura's father, Abura, who we mentioned earlier. Notably, Degasu seems to be a little bit wary of its power, whilst Goma seems to have a lifelong obsession with it. Perhaps he really is a weak demon, and he believes that it would be the only way to fully secure his position and give him the power to protect himself. Needless to say, these three have a lot of charm, and combine the early Dragon Ball villain humoristic trio trope with more sinister undertones. But they aren't the only characters that we would like to include in the script. There are at least two more. So, we finally know where the Namekians come from, and it's come full circle. Now, we previously thought that they originated from some kind of divine realm, but in reality, they were housed in the demon realm. Demon King Piccolo has now gone full circle. We're then introduced to a new set of three Dragon Balls guarded by a fearsome Tamagami, as are the other two, which we already saw in the trailer. Even Goma and Degasu are wary of them. Oh, and let's not forget their creator, Momnito! No, 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 okay, joke. Never. Seriously, these two Namekians look like twins almost, with maybe a couple of differences. And the fact that Neva looks and feels even older, almost decrepit, it would be fun if they originated from the same being though, it's kind of an interesting parallel. He also mentions that we are forbidden from leaving the demon realm, which is curious, as we don't quite know if he means his people or himself, Goma and Degasu. Well, he is being taken as a leading expert on Dragon Balls and taken to Dende, so I guess he's okay. He seems to be more than happy to assist Goma though. And then this senile ancient Namekian suddenly turns badass, what? Remember those blue beams from the trailer that we talked about a while back? Yeah, it turns out they weren't new Dragon Balls. It turns out that Neva just has a tractor beam, got to Dende's lookout to locate the full set of Dragon Balls, powered them up before they were recharged, and be able to do that within a couple of minutes like it were nothing. These kind of powers we've never seen from a Namekian before. But the question is though, is this guy like this around Dragon Balls only? And are these his last working memories that he needs to use? Or is the senile lost old grandpa only a mask for something more evil? Is he the big bad? Demon King Piccolo was a pretty classic villain. And while Daimer is going to be connected to the Boo Saga, you know, Toriyama, Dragon Ball, they like to mix things up. Because in Superhero, they took advantage of both Red Ribbon Army and Android Saga together. So... Who knows? Maybe it's Neva who will pull a King Piccolo Lord Slug thing on Goma and Degasu to regain his youth. If he even needs to. In my opinion, there is a lot more to this character than we think, and he does seem to be quite powerful even in the modern standards of Dragon Ball. Seriously, again, we haven't seen any Namekian elders do these sorts of things to sets of Dragon Balls. We, this is brand new. That's kind of insane. Unless he has power over every single type of Dragon Ball. Oh my gosh, it's confirmed he wasn't gone. He was imprisoned in the Demon Realm, of course! Never is Zap! Anyway, whoever this character is, we are quite sure that he will be important. After all, when we got that first voice trailer, he was the first character that we heard. And yeah, 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 we feel so stupid for not realizing that this was a dragon summoning spell, as some of you rightly said in the comments. Takarapto Paparunga Pupalitparo was the thing that was used to summon, well, Purunga. 
and the thing that we heard in the first trailer was simply Potorat Dororis, Poplit Paro, which only proves that at some point we are going to be seeing and discovering a new internal dragon called Dorusi. Sounds exciting. I do wonder what the design will be though, as this thing seems to be demonic in origin, so demon dragon? But then again, aren't technically all dragons now demons? Anyway, after those few scenes, it is hard not to count Neva out as an interesting party in the conspirator pantheon, whether it's the true mastermind behind it all, or a wise entity trying to teach the younger demons a lesson. It's hard to say, but for now, we are not buying the simple senile old man shtick. We're onto you and your tricks, more night never. I wonder if he likes Bardock as well. Well, that would be the end of it all, but we then got a glimpse of Glorio. Now, we were previously theorizing that either Panji or Glorio might be in the running for the Demon Realm King title. Just what was this guy doing around Goma's palace? Now we know that he might be some kind of character who will bring our heroes into the demon realm. So the question is, is he really the good guy or is he self-serving? Maybe he's a secret love child of Dabura, or maybe he's just a noble but misguided character. It's hard to say, but judging from the episode two title, we are going to be seeing a lot of this guy. So yeah, it's called Gloria. So to sum it up, it's kind of nice not knowing who the main bad guy is going to be or what the stakes truly are. It's also quite refreshing to have competing parties of antagonists. So I truly do wonder whether or not Goku and Co are truly needed for a full adventure. For now though, Diamond Start was a little bit heavy on the introductions and the expositions, but we got some pretty sweet lore to digest, which we will discuss in detail once we have more, well, uh, details. But for now, we hope that you're enjoying this series and we hope to see you in the review at the end of Friday or Saturday. But until then, I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later.